In this series of videos, I'd like to provide a quick review on Python programming. Here, I'm assuming that you are at least vaguely familiar with object-oriented programming such as C++, Java, and Python. For example, you understand variables and expressions, if-then statements, loops and functions, if not, or if you would like to familiarize yourself with Python programming, I'd suggest that you start with Charles Severance Python for Informatics. You can download his book, slides, and watch his videos on pythonlearn.com. This Python review, for the most part, is based on the first chapter of the book, Data Structure and Algorithm by Goodrich, Tamasia, and Goldwasser. This chapter is titled Python Primer. You can find PDF version of this book on the internet. After a short overview of Python programming language, we'll talk about objects in Python, in particular Python's building classes. It is followed by a discussion on expressions, operations, and precedence. Next, we introduce flow control in Python with conditionals, for loops, and while loops. We then explain functions, simple input and output in Python. For people new to computer programming, exception handling might sound unfamiliar, We'll give a quick rundown of it. Then we turn our attention to iterations and generators. Before we discuss scopes and namespaces, we introduce some Python conveniences, including conditional expressions, comprehension, and sequence packing and unpacking. We end the series with a quick introduction to Python modules and import statement. Python was originally developed by Guido van Rossum in the early 1990s. Python 2 was released in 2000 and Python 3 in 2008. As of today, many people, including many data scientists, are still using Python 2.7 due to better compatibility with many Python libraries and modules. But Python 3 is catching up in that regard. These videos will be based on Python 3. If you are interested in knowing the key differences between Python 2, particularly Python 2.7 and Python 3, you may want to visit Sebastian Raska's blog. Python is an interpreted language. If you have Python properly installed on your computer, you can run the command Python in the command prompt or CMD on a Windows-based computer or in a terminal on a Mac or Linux-based computer. Let me give it a try. On my Windows-based PC, I click the start and because I've been using command prompt very often so you see it is listed over here, otherwise you can simply search CMD and you will be able to find your command prompt uh, in a Windows-based PC. Let's click it. It goes into my home directory. To launch Python, it's very simple. Type Python, hit return. You will see Python versions information followed by Python prompt. In my case, I have installed an account distribution of Python. That is why you see Python 3.5.2 Anaconda. I always recommend my students to install Anaconda for its convenience. The Python prompt looks like three signs of greater than. The Python command invokes a piece of software known as Python interpreter. The interpreter can receive 
and evaluate a command and report the result of the command. For example, we can type 5 plus 3 and hit return. It reports the result, which is 8. This environment with Python prompt is oftentimes called Python command line or Python shell. To exit Python interpreter or Python shell, simply type exit parenthesis and hit return. Now we exit the Python shell. But more often than not, people write a series of commands and save them in a text file. This text file is called source code or script. In Python, scripts are saved in a file named with .py suffix. For example, I have a Python script named libier.py. This Python script will ask the end user to enter a year, and the program will tell you whether this year is a leap year or not. To execute this file, we first need to make sure that we are in the right directory where the Python file is located. You can either move to that directory by using cd command or provide the directory in your Python command. Here, I will simply provide the directory in the Python command where my Python file is located, and then hit return. Here we go. It asked me to enter a year, for example, 2017, hit return. The result shows that 2017 is not a leap year. This is how you can run a Python script at the command line. If after you run the program, you would like to enter Python shell, you can do something like this. This is our original Python command. I'm going to simply insert dash i flag between the command python and the directory and hit return. Once again, it's asking me to enter a year, for example, uh, year 2000. It is indeed a leap year. But after the program is done, now we are in Python shell, in the interactive mode. Using command prompt or Python shell is obviously not a very user-friendly way to run Python. Many IDEs or integrated development environments have been developed to provide better and richer platforms and user interfaces. Actually, the standard Python distribution comes with one named IDLE. IDLE includes a text editor along with a basic debugger. Like I mentioned previously, I recommend my students to install an account distribution of Python. It comes with an IDE named Spider. There are different ways to launch Spider. You can start with something called an account navigator. Once again, you can click the start, and I have an account navigator right here. Otherwise, you can use the search box to search for navigator. Once you click it, you will be getting the Anaconda Navigator looking like this. From here, you can manage your environment, applications, and packages. Well, you're encouraged to look into some of the details about Navigator. From Navigator, of course, we can launch Spider right here by clicking the Launch button. Alternatively, you can create a shortcut for Spider. Spider right here. You can right click and then you can create a shortcut. Or you can simply decide to pin Spider to taskbar or to pin it to start menu. More often than not, I launch Spider at the command line. All you need to do is to type spider 
and then hit return. It will launch Spider. After you've launched it, you will be seeing something like this. Overall, Spider is quite easy to use. I will leave exploring Spider to you. Instead, let's look at another application under Anaconda Navigator. That is Jupyter Notebook, formerly known as IPython Notebook. It is one of the most popular and powerful tools for data scientists. Actually, almost all my lectures for this course are done in Jupyter Notebook. You can launch Jupyter Notebook via Navigator, of course, or simply type Jupyter Notebook at the command line and then hit return. But in this case, I'd recommend that you move to the appropriate drive and directory at the command line first before you launch Jupyter Notebook. It is not necessarily very convenient to navigate to different drive or directory in Jupyter Notebook. For instance, almost all my files are in my Dropbox directory on D drive. By moving to that folder at the command line and then launching Jupyter Notebook, I can easily navigate through anything within my Dropbox folder. If, however, you want to navigate to another drive or an upper level directory, it is extremely inconvenient to do so in Jupyter Notebook. Here, I'm not going to provide a tutorial to Jupyter Notebook. There's plenty of resources on the internet, but I suggest you to learn about it and be familiar with it. I'm going to show you how to do that in my case. Instead of launching Jupyter Notebook directly, I'm going to switch to my Dropbox folder by doing the following. It's on D drive, and I'm going to change my directory to Dropbox. And then I can launch Jupyter Notebook right here. Because I've launched it already, I'm not going to hit return over here. Instead, I'm going to show what I'm going to see. This is what I'm seeing when I launch Jupyter Notebook at Dropbox. It includes all those folders where I store my materials and data set and so on and so forth. All right, to wrap up this first video, let's take a look at a Python program example. In this example, we want to create a GPA calculator based on students' letter grades. First, we print out some instructional message. Then, we create a map between letter grade and point value. In Python, this is called a dictionary, which we'll discuss in one of the later videos. We'll store total number of courses and total points in these two variables, respectively. While loop is used in this case, because we don't know how many letter grades a student has. Within the while loop, we first ask the user to enter a letter grade. The loop will be terminated if the end user enters an empty line. If the user enters an unrecognizable grade, the program will throw an error message if all goes well, the total number of courses and total points are calculated. In the end, it will print out the GPA. Let's give it a run. Let's say the first grade is A, second grade is C, and the last grade is B. So the GPA should be 3.0. Let's enter an empty line to end the grade entry. Here we go. Your GPA is 3.0. In the next video, we are going to talk about objects in Python.